Before I get into the sermon, I probably should apologize. It's long overdue, particularly those that knew me well when I was here. My influence was so bad my freshman year that in the summer I received a letter from the school telling me that I was not accepted back. And then Pastor Buzz, the next school year, or maybe it was my freshman year, asked me to leave his Bible class because I blurted out a, an answer to one of his questions that was so sacrilegious and disruptive that he needed me to leave. Now, I apologize to God for that, but Pastor Buzz, where are you? I am sorry for that. You handled me with dignity and grace. Well done. I learned a thing or two on how to handle kids in class. I apologize for that behavior. Um, my freshman and sophomore years, I was voted class pastor, but I think it was mostly as a joke because everyone thought it would be funny to have the wild party rocking guy as their pastor. Freshman year, I was suspended. Sophomore year, expelled. Junior year, I didn't get caught. Senior year, I almost got expelled. So that's why I need to apologize. None of the behavior is condoned. It's inappropriate. But I am deeply sorry. I'm sorry for the faculty that had to suffer through extra adcom meetings to figure out how to handle my behavior. But I am a different person now. Thanks be to Jesus Christ and His grace. I am a new person, not perfect. But because of those experiences and how the school handled me, I've learned a thing or two about grace and Jesus Christ. I saw how SVA handled me with grace and forgiveness, and it's, it's helped me see Jesus. It's helped me understand this scripture passage that we've had this morning read to us. Now, along... Many things have happened since 1992. Class of 92, I'm speaking to you right now. Where has all the time gone? I just can't believe it. In fact, it caught me off guard. Last year, one of my members, she's an alum, Deborah Du Bois McMillan, maybe you're watching right now, class of 1969. She said, next year's your 30th. And I'm thinking, no, it's not. You're, you're miscalculating. I was a greater a tutor for Mrs. Lear's. Then I did the calculation and realized why I was a tutor for Mrs. Lear's. It wasn't because of my math, math prowess. It was so she could keep an eye on me, keep me out of trouble. I think she used to say, used to say idle time is the devil's playground or something like that. So obviously it's been 30 years. And in all that time, God has worked through all of us. Memories come back. And whether it's an alumni gathering like this or a graduation, it's like we were teleported back in time, and as the memories flash before our eyes, we can almost relive it. And if you have children like I do, my wife Alicia and I, we have three. My oldest is 20. My middle boy, Ashton, class of 2022, high school senior. And Hannah is 15 and a sophomore. And everything that they experience, we experience vicariously through them. And it brings to mind everything that we went through. And so here, you're here today reminiscing Longing for those moments, perhaps trying to relive them. Maybe others of us are regretting, wanting to erase some memories. You have mixed emotions about the past. Whatever the case, I have thought what would have happened had I not been allowed to return after my freshman year? Or what would have happened if I wasn't allowed to march my senior year? Well, I don't know. So I focus on what I do know, and that is I am grateful for the grace SVA gave me. I have learned about Jesus Christ and the gospel through the way they treated me. And I've learned how Matthew 9, 35 through 38 is so special for Christ's followers. As it proclaims, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers. And so my wish this morning is to speak with you about Jesus and his grace 
and how this passage became so pivotal to me, hoping that it becomes or remains pivotal for you. Shall we do this together? Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this moment as we relish in the splendor of this campus, as your gospel radiates through every faculty and student and its mission and purpose. As we focus on this passage this morning from Matthew chapter 9, please lead us closer to Jesus. Move me out of the way. Thank you for the breeze and this weather, and may it continue to radiate your love, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I remember it distinctly. 1989, summer, open the letter, distinctive logo, dear Brett, we're sorry to inform you, your application has not been accepted. I was broken hearted. I mean, I get it, I understand. Maybe it was what happened early in freshman year. As a dare, just a dare, a couple of us were dared to escape the boys' dorm, middle of the night, run over to the girls' dorm and talk to our friends at their window. Honest, we didn't go inside. Made it back, but we got spied by the assistant dean, Brent Mann, and I was suspended. So maybe that was the reason for the letter. Or maybe it was what, what, ha what happened at the end of the year. Gra uh, just before graduation, exams are over and there's all this free time. So a bunch of us decided to go off campus and cliff jump in the quarry. Is that still a thing? I don't know. Illegal. It was illegal then, too, and that didn't stop us. And on the way, I saw Farmer Crump and his tractor doing the tractor thing and his pickup truck with a 22 rifle in the rifle rack. And I don't know what came over me. Stupid idea. I ran over and stole it, and on the way to the quarry, hid it in the woods. Well, Farmer Crump saw the whole thing. The sheriff caught up to us. I returned the gun. But we were still hauled back to campus in the squad cars and turned over to administration. <laughs> we had to come back to school early that summer to go to court. We were charged with community service. Maybe that was the reason I got the letter. <laughs> Whatever the case, I get it. I understand the situation. They had to deal with me. They had to figure out how to handle me. Did I mention that that letter that I received that summer of 1989 was sent to me before the new principal arrived on campus? When Mr. Dean Hunt heard that several other students received a similar letter, he went into action. He called me up, answered the phone. I want to meet you. I want to meet your family. Next thing I knew, three hours later, he's in my living room getting to know me and my family. Wow. Then he asked... Do you want to come back to SVA? Well, of course. I'm sorry for what I did. I'd love to. Then he said, I'll make that happen. Your past is forgiven. All you have to do is just try your best. Deal. Sure enough, I got another letter. This time, it was a welcome back. Application accepted. It was a letter of grace. That was my first real experience with grace and forgiveness. I learned about grace and forgiveness. My past washed away. Now, I wasn't perfect, but I was grateful. Fast forward, senior year. I don't know how it happened. <laughs> Greg, maybe it was you. You know, you're in cahoots with the boys' dorm getting practice for your future career. I don't know. Somehow the dean found out about the operation I had going on in my room. So he confronted me. And in my presence began to search my room and I knew I was in big trouble because it would be pretty obvious to find the stolen, I mean borrowed chemistry equipment from the chemistry lab that I had turned into a distillery. I offered to give the equipment back, but that didn't make any difference. Next thing I know, another administrative committee is in action. And honestly, it was that moment in my life that I first felt convicted, repentant, remorseful, because I realized how my personal desires were affecting my spiritual life. And my influence with my peers, I was class vice president, 
And I assumed, I figured my expulsion was imminent. I'd already been disciplined for an event earlier that year. And so now I didn't care what was going to happen. I was honestly ready to make a difference and a change. I was repentant, even if I wasn't allowed to stay a student. Meanwhile, administrative committee is wondering how to handle this incident. Should I be allowed to remain a student? Is my repentance real? What would the student body think if I'm allowed to remain? Well, praise the Lord. They allowed me to stay. Allowed me to march. I just had to resign from class vice president. I even volunteered to stand up before the student body and acknowledge my faults and encourage people not to follow my old ways. That was my second experience with grace and forgiveness. The way the faculty handled me with dignity and prayerful determination to find the best way to handle me taught me a lot about grace and forgiveness and Jesus Christ. You see, when, when we forgive someone, we're offering them grace. We are washing their past away. It is gone. No more. And that's exactly how the faculty treated me each and every time. Sophomore year when I was expelled. Mr. Hunt didn't say, Brett, I went to bat for you last year. Now look what you did to me. Nope. He didn't throw that in my face. He could have, but he didn't. They handled me based on the immediate situation that deserved that just, just judgment. Because I was forgiven, they treated me as such each and every time. Fast forward, several years after graduating in 92, I'm sitting in a Bible seminar with my girlfriend, Alicia, who's now my wife, and that evening, Matthew 9, 35 through 38 was the center focus. And that evening, it was like I had never heard that passage before. That evening, I realized, it clicked. I knew exactly what that was speaking about. And it was speaking to me. It was like there was no one else in that room. You see, that point in my life, I was enjoying a career in the wine industry. I was a vineyard manager for a winery, a sales rep, a consultant. I was at California State University, Fresno. I was a research assistant for the Viticulture and Enology Research Center. I was working on a degree in viticulture, and that day I had been working in the vineyards. And so when there's this call from God asking for more laborers to go out into the harvest field because the harvest is ready, I understood that. I knew about laborers and harvest and crops and vineyards. And so there it was. I realized it clicked. Catch this. This is what this passage is talking about. It, it's not just talking about God needing your help as laborers and my help as laborers, all of our help as laborers. That passage, this passage, Matthew 9, 35 through 38, is about grace. It's about grace that Jesus has given you because we don't even deserve our own lives, let alone to be called laborers for Jesus Christ. Amen? But this passage is about grace because he's forgiven us as we bring our contrite hearts to Jesus. He says, you're forgiven. Now go out there and bring in the harvest. So it clicked for me at that moment. I realized I need to start working in God's vineyard. So I prayed about that. Diligently. I sought help. I, I sought out my people and the pastors and prayed. We discussed it. I searched scripture. Lord, what do you want me to do? And so as I'm reading along, as I'm, we're talking in this journey, things became more clear, like the Great Commission. You know, so in the context of, Lord, what do you want me to do? Great Commission. We know this. Go, therefore, and make disciples. And you know, you can read this two ways. Literally, it, it can be read, as you go your way, on your day-to-day -day journey, make disciples. You know, the, the main verb is make disciples. We're the subject. And how we make disciples is the going, the participle. That part stuck out to me. I, I could be a disciple maker right here in the vineyards, in this industry, perhaps. You remember the story about the man with the legion of demons? Jesus cast them out into the herd of swine. Remember that? They jumped off the cliff and killed themselves. That man was so overjoyed because of grace and forgiveness. He begged Jesus to follow Jesus and go make disciples over there. And Jesus forbid him. He said, no, stay. 
Stay and make disciples right there in your community. Stay in that context. So that, that was one angle. I, I didn't know if that's where God wanted me to go. But also the traditional reading of the Great Commission is to go. Go over there. Leave here. Go there. Make disciples. That's also true as well. Maybe that's what God wanted. So I prayed. Kept praying. Then I'm home for summer break. Summer of 1998. And I heard about camp meeting right here on this campus. Do they still have camp meeting here on this campus? Maybe they will again one day after this pandemic stuff breaks. So camp meeting, I decided to go to the Friday night and Sabbath day closing session. Sabbath morning, 8.30, I'm at, never done this before. Early Sabbath school, 8.30, went to Sabbath. That's how on fire I was in trying to hear God's call. As I got up to leave after the session was over, the gentleman next to me got up and he asked me, are you a seminary student? No, I'm not. But I've been praying about it. I, well, I feel impressed to tell you, you should be. What? That's exactly what I was praying about. Should I go to seminary and get trained, be a pastor, or should I stay and make disciples where I am as a lay person and be trained by the pastors there? Go to seminary or stay? I didn't know. How did he know that? He said, I am Lou Preston, ministerial director of this conference. I encourage you, go to seminary. He went and found a colleague. They prayed with me on the spot. So there I am on fire now that summer. As it near the end, I was excited to go back to Fresno State, finish my degree, because now it seemed even more clear to me where I needed to go. I had already proposed to Alicia. Meanwhile, she's still in Fresno. She started studying the Bible full time, it seemed. I had the privilege and honor to attend her baptism. We got married in October 98, finished the school year. We moved to Michigan. I attended seminary. Two years later, got a call to Southern California Conference to pastor, and I've been there ever since. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. And I am fully convinced, without a doubt, that because of SVA, the arm of the church, and the way they handled me with grace and forgiveness, it was a crucial reason, it is a crucial reason, why I am proud and willing to be an SDA Christian and a laborer of the church. Because of SVA. On this campus, I went full circle from an administrative committee to determine my fate to a divine encounter in prayer to confirm my future right here on this campus. Jesus works through the faculty. Jesus works through this mission and purpose. And I am grateful for it. And so what I want you to take away today from my story is this. Please take away this main point if you can remember anything. It matters what you do with the grace you are given. It matters what you do with the grace you are given. Every faculty member received grace through Jesus Christ when they accepted him as their savior. In turn, the school gave me grace and forgiveness as they dealt with me. And that influenced me to be graceful and forgiving in my relationships then and today. Lord willing to be graceful and forgiving. And... Jesus Christ ultimately inspires all of us. We celebrate that in this traditional time of Easter. The life, death, resurrection, and return of Jesus Christ inspires us to be laborers for Jesus, to take that grace, to do something with it, to be a laborer for Jesus. Do something with the grace you are given. Amen? Amen. Keep doing that something. And what is it we do as laborers? And that's all of us. Student body, class of 2022, Alumni, employed, overemployed, unemployed, retired, wandering around, whatever. As laborers, we're all called to be laborers. What do we do as laborers? I'm going to sum it up. First thing, have that session with God prayerfully. Get your people together. If you don't know your call, find it. He's going to call you to do something. A vocation, a profession, a career, a calling, something with your spiritual gifts, take it, get it confirmed, and go for it. Go for it. Do it. Start now. Don't wait 
any longer. And now, as you know your calling, why, he might confirm you in your, in, your, in your calling. Keep it up and go for it. Or perhaps you're sensing you need to make an adjustment. It's a different season of your life, new relationships, new purpose, new mission, whatever it is, new career, academic career, whatever. Go for it. Find it and go for it. But there's more ways to be laborers. Why, as we're going for it, we get out there and we make a difference. We offer grace and forgiveness. Amen? We let Jesus work through us so that people know Jesus and the gospel better because they've known us. Make a difference in their lives. And finally, the ultimate way today is we focus on this school and this campus as a laborer of the kingdom. You can contribute as a laborer of the kingdom and spreading the gospel by supporting the arm of the church, Shenandoah Valley Academy, because it demonstrates the gospel and its mission and fulfillment to educate this student body for eternity. As you contribute and help this school, you are working and serving as a laborer of the kingdom. Amen? So now in your mind's eye, you know clearly what you need to go out and do. Let me pray for you as you go out and go for it. Father in heaven, we thank you for this privilege, this honor to serve, to worship, to be a part of the church and this academy and this fellowship. Bless us now in our endeavors to hear and understand your call, to fulfill it, to do our best as imperfect creatures, but, but forgive it. In the gracefulness of Jesus Christ, may we radiate grace and forgiveness in all we do. May people know Jesus better by having known us. We pray, support this, continue to bless this school through all this support today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless you all.